pads are useful for their purpose, but they are no substitute for brains. Uh, all right, here we go. I have to say, well done, Bray. Well done. <laughs> well played, my adversary. Well played. <laughs> Phoenix is a gay, but if he was, he'd pick Fremo. Oh, yeah, he'd be living down there with you in the bunk, man. Woo! Once you go free, you always do the Z. <laughs> One day I'm not going to Duncan, and you could get a controller, a new Xbox, possibly even a cord. <laughs> Technical difficulties have occurred with the hosts of this podcast. Please do not adjust your broadband connection. Thank you. Welcome to BGFG, episode 448. I'm your host, Chris Phoenix. Unfortunately, Fremo could not make it uh, this week, so it's just me. I'm a little under the weather, but we're going we're gonna to chug through it. <laughs> uh, been an interesting week. I, I know up here in the Northeast, uh, it's been extremely hot. Uh, lots and lots of uh, allergens in the air, which is never good. Uh, but let's get on with the news for this week, and we'll see, uh, we'll see what information we can throw your way. BGFG News. You heard it here third. So first up, this past Thursday, everything changed for college sports. Uh, the NCAA will allow athletes to profit off of their own personas now. This is the biggest change to college sports ever. You're talking endorsements, compensation, and sponsorship. Uh, the old rule was if you're in any college sport, you could not accept any outside money. That doesn't mean there wasn't money. It just means you couldn't accept outside money. Students would get stipends or help from fans that are part of the Boosters Club and things like that for their programs. Can you imagine how much Shaq or Jordan would have been making before they even got to got to the pros when they were still in college? In, in 2019, California passed a law called Fair Pay to Play. LeBron and California government made that happen. So that you get paid for your name, your image, and your likeness, which is not of the realm of possibility. This works great for video games and jerseys, but what about the education? That's why you originally didn't get paid, because you got into college to get an education and your ability in sports paid for it. But now you're getting paid for appearances. You can do summer camps, which will probably be the biggest of all of them, uh, and social media posts. So you can, you can make a little uh, side hustle before you even get to the pros. You will not get paid or make money for choosing a school, though. Uh, but it's going to give everybody a good a good opportunity to make their own brand, which is also nice. With proper rules in place, it should be fine, as long as none of these athletes are working with Live Nation. <laughs> because Live Nation, uh, also known as Ticketmaster, is being sued. And so they should be. It'll be an antitrust suit from the Department of Justice and 30 other states. Uh, The two companies have been under a microscope since merger in 2010. Uh, What's funny is that even after all the problems with Pearl Jam and other artists, it took Taylor Swift fans to be angry to cause this. Uh, And I'm I'm assuming that it was a lot of people in politics uh, that probably tried to get Taylor Taylor Swift tickets and couldn't. And now they're all bent out of shape because that's usually how it works. As you've been told on the show before, Ticketmaster hits you with all sorts of weird fees, ranging from revenue taxes to venue taxes to management fees. Um, The list goes on and on. If you ever break it down, you can go look at the actual, uh, the argument to be made. Click on the link in the show notes. Uh, And Ticketmaster controls it all with unbreakable contracts for artists as well as the venues that they're going to. So it's pretty, pretty much a serious hustle. The House did pass a bill called the Ticket Act that will show the consumers the complete price up front, which is why you're getting all these weird fees. The goal of the lawsuit is to break up Live Nation and, in turn, Ticketmaster, which is a good idea. And they just got – and to top it all off, Ticketmaster just got hacked, uh, and that could affect 580 million people. And what's strange is that the hackers are only asking for $500,000. So they got hacked. They have access to 580 million people's information, which is probably going to account for credit cards and everything else. Uh, and they're only asking for half a million dollars. It seems really kind of odd. And it was a very blanketed. I think this is a ploy, in my opinion. My opinion. 
this is a ploy for Ticketmaster to get some sort of sympathy uh, because they're being hacked. But nobody's going to give them sympathy and at least give a realistic hack if this is truly a scam. $500,000 for 580 million people. And you blatantly said, if you don't give us the money, we're going to put it on the dark web. Like, come on. that That's it's a little strange, don't you think? I mean, just a little bit. Once that happens, you'll have a bunch of smaller companies trying to make money. Um, let's call them digital scalpers, because that's really what it's going to be. And that'll be the next scam that we need to pay attention to, is all the digital scalpers. And speaking of scams, the Federal Trade Commission has shared data uh, excuse me, on the most impersonated companies in 2023. And we're going to take this from least to most. So the bottom of the list is Wells Fargo. After that, you have Bank of America. After that, you have Comcast. And then you have Apple. Now, I've seen some of the Comcast ones, your bill's overdue, click here. I've seen some of the Apple ones, um, your payment didn't go through for your Apple Care or something like that. Even Norton LifeLock is on that list, which is just hilarious unto itself because then people are like, Oh my God, life log. Let me, let me give you all my information. And then also on the list in number three is publishers clearing house. Really? Publishers clearing house. Like who's, who's falling for that scam? Is it like, you know, magazines and like who's falling for that? Uh, number two is, well, uh, I'm sorry, Publishers Clearinghouse was four. Number three is Microsoft, understandable. And then you got PayPal and Amazon. Uh, the PayPal one is, I believe, your charge has been refunded. PayPal's been the cause of scams for a while. Amazon is another one. Your package is delayed. You've probably seen that one uh, where your package is delayed. You click on it and it you give away your credentials. But the number one most <laughs> scammed company is Best Buy's Geek Squad. And I've seen this one too. It's It'll say that um, you're going to be charged $400 for your last service. And there's nothing that Geek Squad charges for $400. Nothing at all. Uh, seven of 10 people end up paying with a gift card like Apple or Target or Amazon. But it always amazes me how many people think that a company like a PayPal or an Amazon or any other company wants you to pay them to square up your account, to pay them with an Apple gift card or an Amazon gift card. That doesn't even make any sense. Like how could you possibly for, fall for that? If you're falling for those type of scams, you're going to fall for pretty much all the scams. The scammers are roughly making $15 million all the way up to $60 million this past year on these scams. And it just breaks my heart because some of them are pretty basic going to the, the particular store or contact customer service, or at the very least, if you get a text message that says, um, click here to fix your, your shipping for Amazon or whatever. I use Amazon a lot, and I can see how that could cause a problem. But if I log into my Amazon, it just says that it's on its way. So there's no other issues. So the way I teach people is I, I always teach them the same way. Just log into the account. See if the account is is got some sort of alert on it. Never, ever, ever click on a link. Um, you can contact the uh, the company, but I wouldn't recommend that because, again, uh, I know Best Buy's Geek Squad, some Amazon, Microsoft, definitely. Uh, you might not even get the right. If you look up on Google, you might not even get the right phone number, let alone once you get there. And most of the time, if you're on the phone with uh, any of these customer service companies and they say, we're going to call you back, don't. Just hang up. Call the company back and try again. Because n nine times out of 10, from what I've seen over the past, say, five years, is that if the customer service rep says, we're going to look into it and call you back, or I'm going to have my supervisor call you back, everybody can transfer from one phone number to another. If they're telling you they're going to call you back, odds are it's going to be a scammer that's going to call you back. And the person that you talk to the first time is going to give the scammer all the information that they need to make it seem legit. And it's just, I, I don't understand how some people fall for some of these. Some people are saying that there's there's another scam going on. 
and that's with Spotify. And I don't, I don't see this one at all. I don't, I don't get it. Spotify. Let me see if I can explain. Spotify is canceling their car thing. That's what they called it. Car thing. Um, essentially it's a little box that sits on your dash. It does all your Spotify. And I believe it links to your Bluetooth on your phone to make connectivity. Now car thing is nothing to write home about. It, it doesn't do anything incredible. It's about the size of a GPS uh, with one big dial, like one of the older GPSs with a big dial on the side. What it did was give you access to Spotify, but that's pretty much it. They stopped making it about two years ago. And I understand why. With Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, there was really no need. We said it was a bad idea when they announced it. Now, owners are receiving emails that they're going to no longer work with it after December, or it's no longer going to work after December 9th of this year. Originally, Spotify was charging extra to use the car thing, and it was offering no refund for the subscription. Why would they? Why are you expecting to get a, a refund? The device has been not manufactured in two years. You've been paying for, what, four years or five years, however long you've had it, and they're giving you plenty of notice that at the end of December, if you didn't like it, then just end your subscription then and now when you got that email. But if you do like it, then you're going to keep going until December. Uh, yeah, you can pay the subscription. I would personally call and see if there was some sort of deal like, hey, can I... I, I just, I, I don't want to pay a subscription anymore, but can I at least use my unit until December and see what they say to that? But to get all, all bent out of shape because they're giving you plenty of, like, I don't understand. There's technology that's going to phase out or age out. iPhone 5s, iPhone 6s, um, uh, Samsung S21s, S22s. Do they work? Sure. Eventually, they're not going to work anymore, and they're not going to be able to be repaired. And Spotify has given you plenty of time. So I don't understand these other generations that want, want refunds and discounts and the device to become open source. Why? Why any of that stuff? They're, they're telling you that they're not making it anymore. Why would, why would you want an open source? You literally have Spotify. You have, you have access. So if you buy a, a car and you have an aftermarket stereo put in, you're going to have Spotify, CarPlay, and Android Auto most likely already built into the unit. If you buy a brand new vehicle, there's going to have um, Apple CarPlay, uh, Android Auto, and probably a bunch of other uh, music apps that are going to be built in or that you can download. So what's the purpose of complaining about this one? They're telling you they're not making any money on it. They're letting you know ahead of time that they're discontinuing. Can't you sub subscription now? It's their device. They don't need to make it open source for you. Get a radio. Connect Bluetooth. I have one car. I have an older Subaru that we use as a backup uh, for myself and the kids. That thing's got an aux jack. That's it. Just don't even Bluetooth. My 2012 Infinity has Bluetooth that barely works, but it works. You know, it's... It, I don't understand. Uh, and then to top it all off, because these people cause... Such a commotion that a day after the announcement, customers with proof of purchase will get a full refund for their device, according to uh, to Spotify, because they had to fold. And I think that's just shitty. I really do just think that's shitty. Uh, there's no need for that. All right, that's that's all we have for um, uh, for news today. I'm gonna grab something to drink because my throat's starting to get sore, and I'm gonna give you some rock and roll. Uh, and as we're doing uh, the summer of covers, uh, this one's from the VH1 Rock Honors, which was a really good show when they did it. This is Pearl Jam doing Can You See the Real Me, a Who cover. It's a great song, and we'll catch you on the other side for some stick style and what it's worth. I love that song when the Who did it, and I think it's a great cover from Pearl Jam. Just great. All right, let's get into this week's uh, stick style because I'm not drinking today. Mmm, gamey. So first up this week is PlayStation's State of Play. Uh, many things were announced. First up, we got Concord. It's an Overwatch type. Uh, five verse five first person shooter with a beta dropping in July. You got God of War Ragnarok, which is now going to be coming to the PC in September. 
That should be interesting to see what the numbers look like on that. Dynasty Warriors or Origins. Uh, this is a classic, <laughs> it's a classic convoluted hack and slash. I love the earlier games. Um, they just, over the years, they just got more and more convoluted and it wasn't needed. But the new one, Dynasty Warriors Origins, is going to be due out in 2025. Then you have Infinity Nikki. It's some sort of anime thing due out in the fall. Ballad of Antara, which is a dark fantasy action RPG due out in 2025. Sky Dances, Behemoth. It's a VR role-playing game with a bow and sword combat, so that should be interesting. You know, break some stuff in your house. <laughs> Alien Rogue Incursion. It's a first-person horror game with xenomorphs. Yeah, I believe that one's VR too, which is a no-go. Xenomorphs in VR, I I'm not down with that. <laughs> uh, Marvel Rivals, which is a five-on-five -five hero shooter with an exclusive Spider-Man skin because that's all they own at this point. Uh, where Win Meets, it's a Souls-like action game with big boss battles. No release date on that one. Until Dawn, which is a remake from a 2014 game, is going to be released in fall. Path of Exile 2, isometric role-playing game that will let players turn into different creatures. And a Silent Hill 2 remake, expected October 8th. Monster Hunter Wilds, which is slated for 2025. But the only thing that was really worthwhile in my opinion was the astrobot game so astrobot's the little robot tutorial uh and now he's getting his own game more or less i mean there is a game in there but it's not a game game it's very cool it's innovative i i always like the astrobot stuff but it's a sad state that most of these games um are out you know next year and the ones that are coming out this year are either not interesting or they're remakes like sony I, I don't understand sony's just gonna get on the ball somehow uh they have to because they, they're they're drowning they are literally drowning they have they have really no good games last year sony said that half of its upcoming releases will be on pc and mobile and we haven't seen anything like that yet um the ending of destiny being leaked early isn't helping them at all it's like bungie and sony just simply don't care it's the last update for a game that they've struggled with um to keep users on and keep users happy and i i just don't think they cared that that it was it was it was going to be released early they just didn't um but it, it shows you how little they care about all that stuff next up we have need for speed unbound a uh, released a drift and drag edition so drift and drag i'm like Psh, that sounds great i figured i'd download it because i didn't like the look of it to begin with all the cartoony shit uh but again can't connect to online without going to ea site which comes back with a 404 error and there's all all the other typical ea bullshit uh then i decided to watch two or three videos from streamers that were playing the new download uh and that didn't go so great either i mean i I don't want to play with those people. I really don't. They're just lots of mouth for a game that really doesn't have a whole lot. Like, you're not playing a sim. You're playing Need for Speed. So don't take it so seriously. And it, it, didn't, even, it didn't even look that great. But to jump through the hoops that EA wants is ridiculous. They're more concerned with how their character inside the car is dressed than what car you have and how fast it is. And I and I think I saw an upgrade with one of those high rise exhausts, the high rise exhaust pipes that comes like off the the back of the car with a giant heart bent into it. Like that's just, I'm I'm good. I'm not playing it at all. <laughs> the other game that dropped that I I took a look at was X Defiant. It's in closed beta right now. Uh, I did play probably about a half an hour of it. It's a first person shooter. It's free to play. Features factions from all the different Ubisoft games. Not all of them, but a good majority of the Ubisoft games. Far Cry 6, Watch Dogs 2, The Division, Splinter Cell, Ghost Recon. It gives you uh, a grouping or a team of each one of those that you can pick from. Uh, it's getting mixed reviews. I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, on one hand, it's a small map arcade shooter. On the other hand, it's got no depth or fun modes. It's just got a good pace. I found it very, very similar to Split Splitgate. So if you ever played Splitgate before, it's it, I, I felt it felt a lot like that when I was playing it. Uh, again, it's a shooter. Try it out, see if you like it. Shooters are really uh, it's like a racing game. Either either it's going to feel right to you or it's not going to feel right to you. 
first person shooters are pretty much the same way. Either it's going to feel right to you or it's not going to feel right to you. Another game I did get a chance to uh, check out uh, again was Gigabash. They got another update. Uh, this is a monster battle game we talked about before on the show. It's fun just to jump in. It's a good couch game starring all the kaiju, all the uh, big monsters from like, you know, older big monsters like Godzilla. Uh, and they did release what we talked about last time on the show is that they released a uh, Godzilla pack, which was really good. I would encourage you to add the $20 upgrade to get Godzilla downloadable content. You get Mega Godzilla, Gigan. Destroyer, and then, of course, Godzilla. <laughs> uh, there's also an Ultraman DLC. So if you like Ultraman, they have a DLC for that. But the new one is called Nemesis. Uh, that's the new DLC. This features Hidora and, more importantly, King Ghidorah. So you get the big, uh, the three-headed dragon <laughs> is King Ghidorah. So you're going to get that. So it's a good buy. It's a good little quick buy. It's a good couch game. Uh, to play with anybody, it's it's people can button mash if they want to, and it'll work fine. It'll be a lot of fun. It's kind of top down, so you can destroy the city while you're doing that. It's 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 a good time. It's not too bad. Last up this week in stick style, we're going to talk about something that's just tweaked me right out. <laughs> Let's talk about Star Citizen. So Star Citizen has now raised over seven hundred million dollars. Uh, they break down how much money they make right on their website. They don't even try to hide it at all. The lowest was May 28th. They made $42,000 in one hour, a little over $42,000. And that was their lowest. And that was May 28th, their lowest. What the hell with this game? It's been in development for over 12 years, and it still doesn't have a release date. It's still in beta. There are ships on there that are like $20,000, legit. Real world money, twenty thousand dollars. There's packages. You buy this ship for you know four hundred dollars, but then the package to to bulk it up and add a bunch of stuff to it, it's another twenty grand. This is obvious. I, I can't stop thinking that this is a money laundering scheme somehow, because <laughs> none of this makes sense. I, I encourage you if you're listening to the show and you get an opportunity, just look up Star Citizen. It it's crazy. Twelve years in development. $700 million, still not a release date. Uh, and, and the price, the cost to buy things is astronomical. I don't see the point. I, I just, I don't see the point <laughs> at all. I don't see what it's doing. Like, I feel stupid. But, all right, let's get to the last segment this week is for what it's worth. So uh, I don't know why this happened, but someone decided to get XP running again. They decided to put it on an old 486 computer. So that's like prior to the Pentium. Uh, the processor was used around what, 89 to 94, I think. And for some reason, they wanted to put Windows XP on it, even though it shouldn't be able to run on it. But why XP? Like last time I saw someone get XP going, it was a fresh build and it lasted around 30 minutes before it was completely in utterly compromised. I I don't understand why they would do that. Like, the, what, what was the point to get it running a, a, an operating system that's no longer supported, that's an absolute, was a great operating system when it was around. But now, if you just put it online, it's immediately compromised. And then you add to the fact that you put it on a 486 processor, which doesn't run anything. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, here's another news flash that I actually didn't see coming at all. Foursquare just laid off 105 employees. Yes, I didn't misspeak. It's Foursquare. But those that don't know, uh, Foursquare was a location-based app in the early days of like the iPhone. You could check in wherever you went around town. Uh, you get hyper-localized deals in, in some cases. Uh you could see who else was was checked in. You could maybe strike up a conversation with them. It was good for like coffee shops, um, donut shops, restaurants, things like that. You could do it at like the post office. And if you checked in enough, you became the mayor of that location. Now, whether you're a mayor or not, there was always like these pop-up deals. So if you were at like the coffee shop, it might be, I don't know, buy one donut, get one free. But it's only in coordinates with that app. Uh, and it, 
when you, when you say stuff like you can strike up conversations with other people in that same building and that if you go there enough, you become a mayor, it sounds really weird today when you say it because it's, we don't, we don't do that sort of thing anymore. But what's funny is that when I saw the, when I saw it, I'm like, wow, four squares still around. Let me look, let me look into this a little bit. Oh, they were smart. They were real smart. So they took all the technology of location-based services and, um, uh, hyper interactions and all the data that everybody gave them back then. And now they use all that data and technology and sold it to corporations. <laughs> oh, that's, that's just so corporate America right there. I mean, why not? They had the data and I'm sure that when they made these deals, nobody was concerned about like as much as they are today. Nobody was concerned about data privacy as much as today. So Good for Foursquare for staying around and being relevant and making money. Um, and I'm sure that just location-based stuff that they're doing is not even remotely close to stuff that happens on Facebook and uh, TikTok and Instagram with sharing your information. So good on Foursquare for hanging around as long as they did. And speaking of old tech that we forgot about, which was another shocker, remember ICQ? Some of you that are older might remember some ICQ. Uh, some of our German listeners might listen, might remember ICQ. Um, they were one of the oldest instant messaging programs out there, and they are now shutting down after 30 years. Uh, they, though they were the first, they couldn't compete with like AOL or Microsoft for messaging, but there was old faithful people that would still stay on, uh, ICQ. It wasn't really run by a name. You could make your name, but you were identified by a, a number, a long series of numbers. Uh, I, I want to say this is really going to age me, but. If you've ever heard anybody talk about ham radio operators and how they identify themselves, it was very much like that, but in the digital age. And for them to hang around for 30 years and still have have ICQ running, I don't I haven't been on it in probably 20 of those years. Um, so I don't even know what the what the landscape looks like, but the fact that they were still around. Um but again, ICQ since then they've been tossed around the internet. You know, like an ex-wife <laughs> finally ended up in Russia, like an ex-wife. Um, and the Russians have been having it for a while. So that probably explains why they're not going to move forward with it or why it's not at become or stayed as popular as it once was. There's just other choices now. I mean, your phone is pretty much going to dictate everything that you do. So a lot of these older technologies are going away and there's nothing you can really do about it because they just phased out, like I said before. Like we talked about earlier with the... Uh, with the Spotify uh, unit. I mean, it's just time. It's just phased out. Just I mean, get over it. <laughs> but sad to see some of those go. That's all I have for this week. Uh, don't forget to click on the show notes. And on the top, you'll see that you can send us a message. Let us know what you think. Make fun of Freemo. That's always fun. I like doing it. And that's it for this week. Tense down. Show's over. So you can find more of this garbage at bgfgonline.com. You can also send us an email with your questions or suggestions at bgfgshow at gmail.com. Find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Overcast, Podcast, Castro, CastBox, Podchaser, and YouTube. Thank you for listening.